had a good week this week. We're finally to our last lesson for the week, the fifth lesson, and we're jumping over to lesson 116. We only have a couple fractions lessons left in the textbook. Woohoo! So we're almost there. So we're on lesson 116, and that starts on page 760. So turn to page 760. It has a long title, but it's something, this is a key thing to learn in fractions. Okay, so this is a really important lesson. The title tells us what it is, finding common denominators to add, subtract, and to compare fractions. Okay, let's talk about what that means. If we have one to add two fractions, let's say I have um, one half, and I want to add to it one fourth, I, the thing, the phrase I always think of with this is that uh, there's an old fashioned phrase, you can't add apples and oranges because they're different things. You know, they're not, you have to chop them up and make fruit salad in order to add them together, right? I always say that's what we have to do with our fractions. We have to chop them up, change them a little, make fruit salad <laughs> so we can add them together because you can't add a fourth to a half and have it have a name. What denominator would it be? Let's see if we can figure that out. If I have a half here, and I have a fourth, if you think about this, ooh, I can chop this in half. I know that one half really is two fourths, right? So that one would be two fourths, and then I have my, oh, let me clear that in and have my one fourth. Now I can add it because they're both fourths. Two fourths, plus one-fourth equals three-fourths. You have to, in order to add and subtract, or compare too, but I always think add and sub, in order to add and subtract um, fractions, they have to have the same denominator. So we don't wanna have to draw pictures for it every time. So this is what we have to do. I like writing them vertically, so one-half, plus one-fourth, and I'll show you why I like to do that. I'm gonna have to rewrite these fractions with the same denominator over here. So I like to do that, line these up, up and down, instead of across, do them up and down, write the new problem over here, okay? And so we have to figure out what is the least common denominator. And that is a term you need to remember forever and always, least common denominator. That would be the smallest denominator that these guys have in common. It can't be any smaller than your bigger number, okay? Because four can't go into a two. Four can only go into a four or something bigger than it, right? So I'm gonna say, hmm, what is the smallest number that both four and two can go into? Well, it's four, isn't it? Because four can go into four, and two can go into four also. So this one's gonna stay one fourth. I need to get this one to have that fourth on the bottom. What times two is four? It's times two, huh? Two times two is four. What I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. One times two is two. So two fourths plus one fourth equals three fourths. Do you see how I got the same answer I did when I drew the, um, drew the picture here? That's the way that you do it when you don't wanna draw a picture, which we usually don't. If you're confused, draw the picture, but you need to know how to do this without having to draw a picture, okay? Now, let's do another one. Let's do, I'm looking at exam, the one we did was actually Example two on page 761, okay? Example three says subtract three and a half, my, we're gonna subtract one and one six from three and a half. So here's the problem. We have three and one half, and we wanna take away from it one and one six. Ugh, I can't take six out of halves, it just doesn't work, okay? I've gotta chop my halves up into smaller pieces, okay? All right, so we're gonna write, our whole numbers just stay the same, but we've gotta get these fractions to have the same denominator. What is the smallest number that both six and two will go in evenly? Smallest one that'll go in evenly is 
six, okay? Because six will go into six once, so that stays one six. One six equals one six. But we gotta turn this one into six. So what do I do to the two to make it be a three? I mean, that, start with less. I say that again, I saw a three there and said three. What do I do to the two to make it be a six? I've got to multiply it by three. Two times three is six. So one times three is three. And you know that one half is the same as three six. Makes sense, right? So now I can subtract. What's three six minus one six? Two six. And now I can subtract the whole numbers. Two minus, I'm glad, let me say that again. Three minus one is two. So two and two six. Now, to really get the right answer here, I need to reduce this fraction. What does 2 6 reduce down to? I can divide both the top and the bottom by 2, and I end up with 2 and 1 third. Okay? And that is indeed what you will see on example 3 that they have done. The last example they give you is 1 third plus 1 half. Let's do that down here. 1 third plus 1 half. Oh, remember, I like to do this vertical. So I'm going to do one third plus one half. Okay, let's do our equals here. What is the smallest number, the least common, smallest number that both three and two will go into evenly? This time it's not going to be one that's already there. Okay, it won't go into th two, won't go into three. Um, Three won't go into four, so it's not four. Neither goes into five, so it's not that. How about six? Will two go into six? Yep. Will three go into six? Yep. That is the smallest number that both of them will go into evenly. So what times two makes six? Times three. So you don't have to write this. I always write this. This is what you should be thinking. Two times three is six, so one times three is three. So one half equals three six. What times three is six? Two times two on both the top and the bottom. Three times two is six. One times two is two. Now I can add two six plus three six makes five six. And we got it, that's it, okay? This is something we're gonna do some extra practice on because this, this is a new concept for you, I know. And it is a key concept. You've got to make sure you know how to do this because you need to know how to do this to do other more complicated things in math in future years. Not this year. Yay! But as you get into higher level math, um, it's a thing you've got to make sure you know how to do. So we're going to we're gonna do it today, but we're going to spend some time next week practicing it as well so you really get this down really super well. Okay? Now, you have a lot more problems today than you did yesterday. You have the lesson practice, which is page 763, and it is quite a bit of a page. It is A through Q. We don't usually go to Q, but there is through Q. Lots to practice on there, and this is good. This is going to be a bit of work. And um, your, le your um, lesson 116 worksheet. So lesson 116 worksheet, okay, and that one has 10 more problems on it for you. I recommend doing the worksheet first because they give you some prompts <laughs> to help you with figuring out what the least common denominator is for the numbers. Um, they give you help clear up through number six, okay, and then on seven and eight they give you um, all the little fraction bar to write it on and everything. So do the worksheet first. That's going to help you. And then, um, you know what, the last two problems on the worksheet, um, I don't think there are any in the lesson practice, but on the worksheet are some comparing ones. You've actually done these before. You have to say which is bigger, um, greater than, less than, or equal. Five-eighths and three-fourths. So turn the three-fourths into an eighths, six-eighths, and then you can compare them. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Let me know if you have any questions on this one. Like I said, we're going to practice it more because this is a key lesson. Um, you have quite a few to do today, and then we'll do some more next week so you get this down super well. Okay? Have fun. Let me know if you have any questions, and we will see you later. Take care, guys. I'm missing you. Take care.